first load this URL, you'll see respectbyplanet.org's first generation two map. This one demonstrating the Ann Arbor Gelman Dioxin 1-4 plume, which there's tons of data to work with to map to make this map. There are 464 locations here, each with more data behind them, each with their own unique location name, they're a distinct well type. Um, you can see the plume outline there, and that data comes from the SIO residents for safe water, and all the marker data comes from the Michigan Department of Environment, Great Lakes and Energy. This is the main repository for all Gelman uh, dioxin contamination in Ann Arbor. There are other websites too, but this is the big one. So when you're looking at this map, you can now do things differently than all those maps that you're used to seeing in newspaper articles, like, like this one is, these are great, they kind of show the same thing, but you can't really drill down because it's just a sheet of paper. This map most closely resembles what's on RMP's map. This is the same data, same outline, same marker, same names. Everyone has the same data, but our software at RMP puts it into a format where you can really zoom in and drill down with a regular Google map, which is pretty cool. So each marker you can click on, like this one for instance, see its well name, the last date it was sampled, what its sample reading was, 290 parts per billion, and each well has its own home page where you can drill down into the EGLE database to see 50,000 records of data. This well was drilled in October of 01, so almost 18 years old. This is a deep well, 191 feet, 10 feet of screen. It's been sampled 99 times. Those are its sample readings, the date it was sampled, what its dioxin reading was, what lab it was. So you can get to that kind of information for every location. If you click on this slide button, slide out a control panel where you have some more tools that you can use to analyze the data you're looking at. We have marker info that lists all the markers, marker groupings, map legend, and the data query, which is not functional yet, but that's gonna be the cool part. Marker info, you have the well name, it's dioxin reading, and if you click on this, you can open an info window to see that particular marker. And you can see the same information, what data was sampled last. You can go to its home page. Marker groupings, you have monitoring wells, which are the white ones, residential wells, which are the yellow ones, extraction wells, abandoned wells, miscellaneous wells, injection wells, surface water, and then the treatment system, which is where Paul Sciences was. Gelman. That's the red pond. That's the green pond. There are extraction wells that surround this most contaminated of area. This is the original location. You can see the extraction wells pull in the water and dump it into the red pond. It gets treated goes into the green pond, then it goes through more piping, and it outfalls here at the end of April Drive, right here in the Honey Creek, where you can kind of see the Honey Creek. There you can see it a little better. There's Honey Creek. The map legend, you can see the different plumes, which come from the Sio Residents for Safe Water website from their maps and image page down here. I use the same data that they use here. I just use some different colors. So those are the plumes. The dotted line is the groundwater prohibition zone. Um, Ann Arbor gets most of its water from Barton Pond here. And their water treatment plant is right here. You can see it a little better this way. So the main concern is that this water treatment plant is the dioxin going to make it over that far. That's why people are concerned. It's the drinking water for a lot of people. So if you
you want to learn more about this map, check it out. I encourage you to, if you're a school teacher, email respectmyplanet dot, or respectmyplanet at gmail.com. Uh, address it to Matt. If you have questions, if you, you want to interact with the data, let your students add to the data, anything like that. This is, these are some websites that might be helpful if you want to research more about this. This is the EGLE main repository. This URL, all these I'll put down into the uh, description underneath the video. This is the history of the Gelman Sciences Lagoon. That's the original nasty that polluted all this entire city. This is some more from the Ann Arbor Library. That's Charles Gelman there. There's Charles Gelman there too in the summer of 63. And then even in 1988, over a million dollars had already been spent. So a lot of money has been spent to collect this data. And now our map puts that data into play where you can really see what you want to see and drill down where you want to drill down and uh, learn more about the hydrology and the water contamination in the city of Ann Arbor. Another great map is the Huron River Watershed Council's map here. It shows the different drainage tiles, where they drain into the river. Um, you can learn more from SIOS Residents for Safe Water. And then this is a great uh, YouTube I'll put in the comments too, where you can learn a little bit about um, water tables and unconfined and confined aquifers so you can understand more about how the water moves and how the scientists delineate the plumes. Yes, potentiometric surface. And the potentiometric surface is the elevation to which water will rise in a well. So in this example, it'll be right there. Okay, that's the potentiometric surface. So th this guy's great. I recommend subscribing. You can learn a lot about hydrology through him. And then for us, if you could help us continue making cool maps, making our maps better. Um, if you could click on donate on our homepage, make a tax deductible donation, working on different environmental maps, Michigan landfills, line five, back 40 gold mine in the UP on the Menominee River, uh, Wurtsmith Air Force Base. Um, your donations mean a lot, but we don't have a lot of money to work with. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you'll check out our new map. And thanks again.